but I don't like these fighters resting on their laurels and just thinking, oh, I'm going to be there no matter what. Like, this, I hope Mikel doesn't take this fight lightly because, honestly, he had a hell of a 2016 until that loss in the semifinal. He certainly did. It's basically his 2016 was essentially uh, a, a surprise run through the tournament. He took out two former Kumite champions in Hedoi and Zaporizhia and Toussaint. That's the thing, you've got a man who, uh, that's the thing, you know, when, when you have that spot locked up and you have the rest of the calendar year, of course, the heavyweight Kumite tournament uh, goes in January, March, and May. So, of course, you have the, the second half of the year, the calendar year, to take on fights at your leisure if you're guaranteed a spot. You know, there are fighters who have to earn their way in, get themselves into the rankings, impress most glorious and honorable Mr. Aga. Keep their minds fresh in the, uh, keep, the, keep their presence fresh in the minds of the fans who get a vote as well. You know, when you're not certain that you're going to be fighting in that 16-man tournament, then, I mean, it really comes down to, you know, what... You know, you have to earn it, but when you're already guaranteed a spot, you can take on some of those, uh, you know, higher profile fights. You can challenge guys who you may not, you know, if you're not desperate for a win, you can take on a fight that you can just kind of test your laurels, give yourself a challenge and not really be uh, hurt by a loss. Yeah, you uh, can that's take what Togoitz is doing. You can take on those French fighters. You can take on the best people who've already been eliminated. I mean, the world's your oyster, essentially, with those extra fights once you're guaranteed a spot. But honestly, I think that your best bet is to take on the best fighters you possibly can. And that's what Mikhail's doing here. I mean... This might, be an, this might be an information gathering session as well. You know, Toussaint is someone we haven't seen in Kubita for quite some time. You know, Torgovitz could be saying, well, you know what? He's a bit of an unknown. Let me get, let me test his medal. Let me see what he can do. You know what? If he beats me, he beats me. But you know what? I'm going to go in there. I'm going to learn about this fighter. And I'm going to get more hands-on experience than anyone else in the Kumite tournament by already having fought him. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I mean, you never know who that who the fans are going to vote in. You never know who's going to get an invitation. I mean, true. everything's up in the air. Oh, big right oh, hand! Oh, that's the death. That's the danger that Togovius possesses. He's got so much deceptive power in his right hand. Those, he is not to fight us out with those. Those hands are like hams made of cinder blocks. Cinder block hams, no doubt. Cal and oh, nice. What speed by Tucson just blowing up that, uh, you know, lighting up that that that. Well, I guess it's a it's a switch kick from his uh, he's a southpaw stance uh, at that point. But again, you know, we saw in the last fight, Lucas Galingas guaranteed a spot in next year's tournament field. But nonetheless, he lost to, to Pastor Coots. Coots might have just fought his way into the field as well. Yeah. So it could come back to, to haunt someone like Turgoviets if he were to lose a, a fight that you look at and say the rankings and say maybe he should be winning this one. Yeah, honestly, like, I mean, and with the points and everything, Coots beats a former, se a former semifinalist and number 10 ranking. And with everything else, I mean, he might be in the top 10 now with just that big... Oh! Oh, let's take another one! Hook to Sant! Just caught him off of the off guard with that hook. I think everyone was off balance and that one, even the two of us. And Toussaint all of a sudden is standing over. He's got to go the stop! There it is! In the stop! That's it! That's it! We're going to see it at right here, right now! The body oh stops! Oh my goodness! The voodoo goodness. man! Oh, good well, the voodoo that he do so well has just been transferred and that is nothing but dark magic coming from the sole of the feet of Toussaint just transferred right into the chest I think that, that connected right in the chest cavity that could collapse that could, that could puncture a lung with the right kind of false cow oh yes it could puncture a lung it could knock the wind out of you I mean oh look at that beautiful use of the head nice That's bucket nice. the shoulders into the chin good placement by Togolis also, also buying himself some time. That stomp was Toussaint trying to treat Togovitz as his own voodoo doll, trying to stab his foot like a pin into the chest cavity. And like I was saying, that unorthodox style. Oh! Oh, good lord! Oh, good god! Look at the way! Oh, good Jesus oh, Christ! Jesus. Oh, my god! Get the camera off his face! Get the camera off his face! That's disgusting! I dare say we've had two heavyweight upsets back to back! Jesus Christ, he's not moving. He's not moving. Only two stunts is the victor. And he's going to have to kill at least a chicken, perhaps a goat, to perhaps raise Turgovitz from unconsciousness. Well, I think he's at, at least agreed to looping, do that. Looping hook. And then he lands a couple of shots just to ensure. 
but he's been hitting with those looping hooks all night. That was just a matter of time, unfortunately. Like, it's almost as if Targoviets was in a bit of a trance. He just kind of watched it happen. I don't know if he was so tired he couldn't raise his hands to block. No, I'll tell or if you he it, just was... I'll tell please you do. exactly what it was. It was the blood. The blood dripping from his eye and from his nose landed right on Henry's chest. Post-stomp, when, when Mikel reversed it, that's what happened. He got the blood on Henry, and once that blood gets in, the ritual's complete.